Global Civil Society Alliance, Civica, says that in its latest report that uh, fundamental civic rights have deteriorated across Africa in 2020. And these include things like freedoms of association, peaceful assembly and freedom of expression. Civica says that 87% of the world's population lives in countries rated as closed, repressed or obstructed. And of Africa's 49 countries surveyed, the Civil Society Alliance says that six are rated as closed, 21 repressed and 14 as obstructed. It says that the detention of journalists and protest disruption are among the top violations from across the continent. For more on this, we're now joined uh, by advocacy and campaigns head at Civicus, uh, Mr. David Corde. Uh, Mr. Corday, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Um, these statistics don't make great reading. Um, give us a sense overall of what you found and compiled in this report. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Peter, for having me and good evening to everyone. Um, so the uh, recently released report from Civicus, like you said, uh, clearly indicates that um, civic space restrictions across the world continue and that civil society continues to operate in a hostile environment. And like you said at the introduction, uh, just 12%, 12 percent, 12.7% of uh, the global population live in countries rated as open or repressed. Um, and 87% of the global population live in countries rated, closed, repressed, uh, or obstructed. Um, in total, um, uh, the report and Civicus and the Civicus Monitor has downgraded 11 countries, uh, ranging from the United States to the Philippines mm -hmm. in, in Asia, uh, to Slovenia in Europe, and uh, of course, about four countries in uh, Francophone Africa. All right, so let's start with how do you do the rating? How do you measure uh, the state of uh, civil uh, liberties, as it were? So we, we com combine a series of reports um, from different countries, and these reports basically capture the state of civic space. Uh, which uh, is um, uh, the um, enjoyment of the rights of uh, peaceful assembly, uh, expression, and association in these countries. Um, and the reports are standardized, uh, and then each country is rated, given a particular score. And at the end of the analysis, uh, and based on the state of civil uh, civic space, uh, depending on whether journalists, civil society organizations, or human rights defenders are able to operate freely. Uh, the team then co uh, computes the, the, the ratings, uh, allocates a score, and then emerges with whether the country is closed, uh, which is the, uh, the at the, uh, the, uh, the worst extreme, or open, which basically says that um, civil society, human rights defenders, and others are able to speak out, uh, address concerns affecting the state without any restrictions. Let's talk a little bit about Africa. Um, what typically were the violations that you saw more and more uh, uh, across the continent? I got a feeling that a lot of it has to do with elections and politics and COVID-19. So the top violations in Africa range from uh, detention of journalists, uh, suppression of peaceful protests, um, um, uh, censorship, uh, in, and intimidation. Mm -hmm. But then the countries that are downgraded were downgraded uh, because of the reasons you advanced. Uh, for example, uh, from Cote d'Ivoire to Niger, uh, and Guinea and Togo, uh, they, they were downgraded and civic space restrictions increased in 2020, uh, particularly because uh, these countries all had elections. Uh, you know, if you look at Guinea, for example, early in the year in March, 
uh, there was a decision by President Alpha Conde to uh, change the constitution via a referendum, and that was accompanied by a uh, violent uh, reprisal of protests um, against the political opposition and civil society that basically said, uh, according to the previous constitution, uh, you are supposed to step down at the end of the year. And we saw similar, a similar trend in Cote d'Ivoire, in Guinea, uh, and in Togo, and even in Niger. All right, so I just wonder as well, um, there's a greater number of uh, mobile phones and smartphones. Has social media played a part? Because with social media, it's easier to mobilize against repression, but also to expose it. And this often doesn't sit well with authorities. That's very true, and that explains why several states, uh, you know, target online freedoms. Uh, they shut down the internet, uh, they restrict access to social media, uh, because basically like never before, uh, citizens uh, are able to capture restrictions in real time and share with the international community. Uh, so we, we are basically, the restrictions may not have increased per se in specific countries, but then the um, manner in which they are reported thanks to social media makes it easy for um, the international community to have information about these restrictions in real time. And again, um, this is one of the reasons why you see in many countries uh, this, uh, you know, the internet mm. is shut down, especially when protests begin or when civil society groups uh, engage in uh, various forms of manifestations. One of the first things that governments uh, do is that they shut down the internet to prevent access to these, the information and, and the visuals that we get to see, even if we are not in these countries. Another sign often when journalists start to be uh, curtailed and uh, uh, journalism starts to, to be censored, often there is a rise in uh, poor governance levels. Is this something that you found uh, in your report? Quite true, actually. Um, you know, from one of the reasons why Niger was downgraded, for example, was because uh, journalists were particularly targeted as they reported on uh, violence, uh, I mean, anti-corruption, uh, as they reported on corruption in the Ministry of Defense. We saw the same in, in, in Zimbabwe. Uh, unfortunately, we've seen the same in Uganda ahead of the elections. Um, we saw the arrest of journalists in, in Togo, uh, in, um, in, uh, in, 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 in Guinea. And, and, and several restrictions in Cote d'Ivoire. In Togo, it was particularly around the period of elections in, in February, uh, several media houses were, were shut down and journalists uh, targeted. And unfortunately, we're seeing the same trends happening now in, in Uganda uh, a few weeks before the next elections. All right, Mr. Kode, how can we use this report and this information to make things better? So what the report does is that it provides uh, specific ratings to, to countries. And that means it, uh, by looking at the ratings, uh, civil society and other advocates can engage with decision makers based on the ratings. Uh, so if you look at a country like Eritrea, for example, that's rated closed, uh, it's quite difficult to have some kind of meaningful engagement with, with the government. And so for civil society, you use the approach of building coalitions. Uh, and then in other countries where uh, the ratings range from um, repressed, oppressed, to obstructed, uh, you can engage with the government. So there are certain recommendations that are found in the report. And the next step for us is to take these recommendations to governments, uh, to decision makers, to international organizations, uh, so that they are aware of the state of civic space in these countries. Uh, and then we provide solutions in the form of recommendations that can be implemented uh, so that by the time the next report is out, at this time next year, uh, there will be um, an improvement uh, on the state of civic space.